Hi, hey, I'm Rodney from PreSonus. I'm showing you Studio One. This is Studio One here. Um, I've just plugged in this laptop. I've just plugged in an Axiom 49 keyboard that Paul was nice enough to give me. Um, Studio One has basically got three pages. Uh, you've got a start page, a song page, and a project page. Um, this is the start page. One of the great things I love about Studio One is that you, although we have menu commands up here, Frankly, I never use them. Um, you shouldn't have to think like a computer programmer and go to menus. Everything is right here in front of you all the time. So on the start page, you can create a new song, a new project. A project's like an album worth of songs. You can open songs. You can put your name. You can put your band's photograph, what genres, your website address, that kind of stuff's there. That's important because we use that metadata later on for digital releases. Uh, you can set up your audio drivers. One of the great things about Studio One is it understands almost every audio interface out of the box. You don't have to get into a nightmare of configuration. And if you've got a PreSonus interface, it automatically configures all the I.O. for you the moment you switch it on. And if you want to add an external device like this one, I just hit Configure External Device, Add M Audio Axiom 49. Okay, and it comes up automatically, received from an Axiom 49. I'm going to make that my default instrument hit OK and Axiom 49 is installed. Um, you'll see how that works later on. Even if uh, your external keyboard, remote control, whatever, if it's not understood, you can reprogram it in about 10 seconds. It's really, really fast. Um, if you're connected to the internet, um, which let's face it, most people are, you get a news feed here. The news feed will tell me what the latest version is. If we're doing any, any, any news that's happening, any in-stores, any special offers, whatever, comes up automatically inside the program. You don't have to go to the website to find out, it comes to you. And also we have demos and tutorials, so lots of demo files, video tutorials, everything you need comes up on the feed. So you can just watch these tutorials and everything right there, which is what people want. Um, once I've done that, I can just open up a song. If I hit hello, uh, this one, just open this song. You can see that the, the metadata, this is the guy who wrote the song, this is picture, I can go to his website just by clicking there, and it's in the song. And here is the basic setup of Studio One. Once you understand this page, you can understand anything. It's really easy. We have an arrange section here. It's simple to any, similar to any other kind of arranger you know, like in, in any other digital audio workstation. And you can see we have automation, we have MIDI, audio, the whole nine yards, the kind of thing you're used to. If you've known any other digital audio workstation, you'll know how this one works. Below that, we have our mixer. Again, works similar to your typical mixer, but we have a lot of interesting new functions that make it a lot easier to use than most other mixers. And then on the right-hand side, we've got the browser. And that's it. That's all you need to know. Once you know that about this software, you can use it. You never have to open the handbook. You never have to use a menu command. It's all there. And I mean, I, down here on the bottom right, you can see I've got edit, mix, and browse buttons. I can put the mixer away and put the browser away so I can see the whole uh, window like that. If I want to edit something, just double click on it. The editor comes up like that. Very easy. If I want to set up my fades or whatever, I can do them in place or I can just do them in the editor if I want a bigger uh, window. So I'll set up some fade in and fade outs there. Um, what I like about this is if I decide I want to make a crossfade, I just grab the two pieces of audio, put them together, and now those two single fades automatically become a crossfade. That's cool. It is pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. I like that a lot. Uh, same for MIDI. If I double click a MIDI track, I'll get my MIDI editor. Um, I can just put that editor away as well. Very, very simple, real easy to use. Uh, just can put the A is automation, view, and on and off. Key commands are dead simple. Also, if you're used to Cubase or Logic or Pro Tools, all those key commands are built in. So you can just convert it to whatever key commands you want to use. But actually the ones we have are really simple. D for duplicate, A for automation. You know, it's, it's easy. Um, let's have a look at the browser. If I go to the browser, you'll see down here I've got instruments, effects, sounds. Everything I have here is drag and drop, everything. So if I want to use a, an instrument, we have some instruments of our own. Say I want to use the impact drum machine, I can just drag that, drag it down to an empty space here, and it automatically makes a track, connects my keyboard to it, and brings up the drum machine. 
Simple as that. As simple as that. <laughs> and then I can load a preset like that, but actually it gets even simpler because I don't even need to do that. I can open the preset here. If I want a 60s drum kit, I just drag the preset in and it automatically drops the preset in. And it's got all my stuff. I don't have any sound on at the yeah. moment. But. And you can see in the flashing there when I play the keyboard, it's automatically working. Very, very easy.